And welcome back to my channel and welcome to my first murder mystery case this is a video that I have been wanting to do for a very long time and this case was actually the case that I wanted to do as my first murder video so a little backtrack of myself I am completely obsessed with true crime watching true crime shows documentaries listening to podcasts and watching true crime throughout youtube i do watch a lot of kendall ray who does a lot of these style videos and i see that a lot of people are doing them now but i've only seen one video on the case that i'm going to do so this case is of michelle pogmore and a little backtrack is that michelle pogmore was raised in mount Jewett. so mount Jewett is actually where i was raised and i grew up in and it is literally my community. I have moved out of that area now but Mount Druid is a place where if you tell people you're from Mount Druid they're a bit ooh because Mount Druid doesn't have a great reputation. I'm going to be honest about Mount Druid. I feel like I need to tell you the community before I get into this case. So Mount Druid is a place made up of numerous of little um, suburbs So Michelle actually lived in Bidwell. There is Bidwell, there's Shelby, there's Blackett, there's Wilmot. Uh, there could be a few more, but I don't. It's not coming to my head. If Mount Druitt does come on the news, it is pretty much not for good things. A young man has been murdered in Sydney's west overnight. His body was found sprawled on a footpath at Mount Druitt shortly after midnight. Some distressing details have emerged after the death of a pregnant woman here at Mount Druitt. Today marks exactly three years since Abrahams and her partner Robert Smith disposed of Kaisha's body in bushland near Mount Druitt, later playing innocent for the cameras. It just makes you sick in the stomach. People really like to bag out Mount Druitt for like the way people are. They say a lot of like bogans live there, a lot of housing commission and people on Centrelink payments. So if you're not in Australia, Centrelink payments are just government payment. So Mount Druitt has numerous of corner shops, it has a Westfields, it has a high schools which are Chifley high schools. From what I have seen and known, Mount Druitt is a very Aboriginal based community but now it is completely a 360. It is full of different nationalities and different walks of life. Yes there is a lot of housing commission and you do really hear bad things about Mount Jewel. You never hear the good. There are really good, hardworking people from Mount Jewel. And that's something I want you to take out of this video as well. That when you hear bad things about Mount Jewel, it's practically the media trying to make that community look bad. So about this case of Michelle Pogmore, she lived with her mother, Kathy, in Bidwall. So Bidwall is probably about a, maybe a five to 10 minute drive to the local shopping center. We do have a lot of buses going throughout that community as well to get to the local shopping center. And I actually used to catch the bus to Mount Jewel shopping center. When Michelle was murdered, she was only 13 years old, which is crazy because there is not a lot of information about this case and it really stuns me that this case has not been solved. People haven't come forward and it is literally a cold case right now. And what else shocks me, there is no place of death. There is no cause of death of Michelle. So you can only imagine her mum, what she is going through. It has been so long since Michelle's death and she has literally no answers and being a mum myself I could only imagine like I can put myself in those shoes like it is horrible and it's horrible that someone has done this to this girl and literally just moved on with their life so if you google this case there is not a lot of information but it's the video I wanted to make to put it back out there this case should definitely still be out in the media and I think a lot of cold cases should still be talked about and these videos are great it gets people to know what's happening or what has happened and it just keeps these stories continuing you don't want these stories to stop being talked about these videos are just perfect for these so michelle was 13 in the year 2004 so in sydney that would have been she could have just turned 13 and been in year seven or eight uh, so you're literally just going from primary school and trying to find your feet into high school so we've all been there the beginning of high school can be the hardest times of your life you are literally just trying to find your feet find those friends 
friends you are more prone to be influenced by your peers as well and year seven you are practically just trying to fit in so doing my research i have found that michelle was reported to community services 37 times before her death. Uh, I couldn't find out why. They do say she was known to be a runaway, really troubled and always skipping school and having fight. Michelle attended Bidwell High School which is a Chifley school tend to be accepted into those schools if you are in the local area so when where I grew up I actually lived across the road from a Chifley so I was automatically accepted into that school so the Thursday before Michelle's murder her mum Kathy said she came home from school in a really bad mood but her mood changed when Kathy gave her a new pair of shoes and on Thursday, February 19, 2004, Michelle left home at around 4.30 in the afternoon, telling Kathy she was going to a friend's house. She was wearing a brand new pair of pink and blue sneakers in size 5. So these shoes will be brought up again throughout this video. So I'm pretty sure in all of Sydney, Thursday night is uh, late night. So a lot of teens do tend to go to the local Westfields, which is just Mount Jewel Westfield. So what Thursday looks in my eyes in Mount Jord is it is late night so a lot of teens do stay stick around after school at the shopping center and because all shops close at 9 p.m on a Thursday night when I was in high school late night I didn't really go to because I didn't really see the fascination of it a lot of people did late night but I found that at Mount Jord there was just too many fights and it wasn't a good crowd to be around so I just tend to never went to late night that afternoon Michelle told her mum she was going to a friend's and I do not know if she actually made it to her friend's house if she went to late night but if you are going like if you drive around Mount Jewel on a Thursday night there tends to be a lot of teens just hanging around that is it people just hang around and this would be the last time Kathy saw Michelle because we don't know what she did that Thursday afternoon and night there was a CCTV video of Michelle at Dawson Moor on the Friday morning at 2 30 a.m. she was spotted on security cameras walking through Dawson Mall in Mount Druitt wearing a jumper with USA on the front, track pants and her new shoes. It's a clear image police would later release to the media. A lot of people comment about how a 13 year old was out at 2.30 in the morning and definitely in Mount Jewel it can be quite scary and I'm gonna say like I wouldn't personally walk around Mount Jewel at 2.30 at night. She told her mum she was doing something else and obviously her mum believed her so and a, little, a lot of people have attacked her mum for letting her daughter do this at the end of the day she didn't let her daughter walk around Mount Jewel at 2.30 at night. So Dawson Moor is actually on the outside of the Westfields. There is an area where I do see a lot of people hang around. There's like a Salvo's, there's a few takeaway shops and then there's like the Department of Housing and that. You do walk through Dawson Moor when you go from Mount Jewel train station to the door of Westfield. So there is quite a lot of traffic going through Dawson Moore. So the last time Michelle was seen was a Friday night at a house party in Bidwell. So we have gone from Mount Jewel to Bidwell. I do not know if she caught a bus there or she walked. And after this house party, Michelle was never to be seen until her lifeless body was found the following Sunday. So house parties are really popular. There is a lot of underage drinking and all that type of stuff. Kathy did say to the media that she had no idea that Michelle was attending a house party. And if she knew, she would have picked her up that night. And I also couldn't find if Michelle had contacted her mum between the time she left her home to the house parties couldn't find what happened between that time period so i did read another report that michelle was last seen on carlisle avenue so carlisle avenue is a very long long street there's two long streets in mount Druitt. there's luxford road and there's carlisle avenue so carlisle avenue goes in the side of mount Jewel, like the community and it cuts through a lot of suburbs and luxford road is on so it's literally like that what no matter what end you are on Carlisle Avenue you do end up on Luxford Road so if you want to go to Mount Jewel, you literally can just walk up Carlisle Avenue and it is at the end of that street so a little bit about Bidwell as well there is quite a lot of housing commission there is a high school there's a pub and there's a local shops but those shops are actually I think that at the moment there's only like one shop working 
then I, then I think it's a kebab shop. On Sunday morning, a family was attending a football game at Town Centre Reserve, which is in Mount Jewett, and there's a bit of bushland there as well. We do have quite a lot of footy fields in Mount Jewett. This family found Michelle's lifeless body. She was naked from the waist down, so if you think about that, I presume she was sexually assaulted. So when Michelle was found, she had no personal items on her. So I don't know if she didn't have any in the first place or if someone took them when they murdered her. So her body had already started to decompose because during that time period, it was 45 degrees. And when it is in summer, it gets so hot around there because we are in the dips. So we have the Blue Mountains up high and then there's like all of us down here. When it is hot, it can get super, super hot. So I did find a report that DNA was found on Michelle. I'm not sure if it was sperm or if it was just like general DNA, but it was of a man, but they didn't find who it was because of that man was not in the police system. So it's obvious that this man has not done anything since his murder and has kept to himself and that's it that's the only information that is out about this case and it is crazy that that is it and you'd think that that would tell us more considering this person has not been found and i have seen michelle's mum kathy on a current affair once or twice there's random articles throughout the local newspaper here and there when it is the anniversary of Michelle. No one has been found guilty. There has been no suspects that we know of. And it's really crazy to think that this killer can still be among that community or if people know something and they're not coming forward. They have asked the people that did attend the house party to come forward to let us know their information. There has been no information being put out there of what those people have said. So due to the lack of suspects and evidence, this crime has become a cold case. Kathy has said in an interview when she thinks about Michelle it literally breaks her which is totally understandable because I, I just cannot imagine not knowing what happened to my daughter and to think that I could be passing my daughter's killer in the street is just bizarre. So Kathy says about the murderer that this person literally got away with murder and she hates them. On Michelle's birthday every year Kathy does make Michelle a birthday cake. So now in 2018 the New South Wales police force have opened all cold cases and that is just truly amazing to hear because all families deserve answers and to know what happened to their family members. There is a hundred thousand dollar reward for this case and that still has not brought any answers and someone knows something even though it is the smallest information or the largest information people are not coming forward and I just do not understand or I can't wrap my head around why people would want to keep this to themselves. I feel like this case of Michelle Pogmore needs to be talked about and brought back into the media because this is something that happened to a 13 year old girl. She was only 13 and what she went through is just truly disgusting. Kathy has a Facebook page, Justice for Michelle. She posts things from the New South Wales Police Force or she would post like anything in remembrance of Michelle and she's hoping that this page will bring some awareness. If you know anything on this case, make sure you call Crime Stoppers. I just think it's time that someone gives Michelle's mum, Kathy, the answers that she deserves because you can only imagine if you were put in those shoes and that happened to your daughter, what would you want? And I can think that this information that someone could be holding is chewing them deeply inside. So I am making this video to keep this topic out there and to keep this case out there. Like I mentioned, I wanted to start my mystery murder cases on this one because it is very close to home and it is something that our community has been dealing with for a very long time and I also feel like our community is not talking about anymore. If our community is talking about it then this could lead to more answers. If this is talked about more in our community I can only imagine that someone's going to slip up and the answers are going to come out. I'll leave a link to Kathy's Facebook page down below and I'm hoping in the near future that I can do an update on this video of her killer being caught. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thanks for hanging on and dealing with my stuffy nose. And I really hope I can bring you another mystery murder case 
very soon. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I document my life as a first time mum, getting fit and everything in between. Thanks for watching guys and bye. Baby.